Okay, I'm here in Adobe After Effects CS4, and what I have here is an animated composition which I built using some BCC6, Boris Continuum 6 um, filter effects. And we're going to take a little bit of a look in After Effects, and then we're also going to go into Avid, because what I want to show is a new feature in the version 6 Continuum product, which is the ability to save animated presets, animated filter presets. Those of you who have used Continuum are familiar with this over here. Um, in past versions it was limited to saving static presets, um, but now it'll save keyframe values as well. So let me preview this little comp to RAM. And you can imagine this kind of thing being used in a show open or promo or something like that. So. Um, what we have here is uh, BCC DVE Basic, um, kind of sliding the video in. You see that I have a little, I have a keyframe, so it does a sort of little elastic kind of bounce to stop there. And there's motion blur on there, which is at the filter level, um, the motion blur. And then it kind of scales up and zooms off there. You see the, the curve we're looking at actually is the position XY of that, that video picture in picture. And then I applied a similar um, animated preset to the title, so it also does that kind of slide in. And there's a lens flare applied to the, the video layer there, timed with the music and with the animation of the title scaling up. And then as the video slides off, there's a sort of a light rays wipe that goes across the, the title. And so that's a fair number of keyframes there in that composition. And I'll show you how you can save that kind of animation as a preset. So here I have the video picture in picture layer there selected, and this is BCC DVE Basic. And I hit the Save button. Would you like to save static or animated preset? I'm going to say Animated. And by default, it's going into the BCC DVE basic folder. You, of course, can save it there, but I'm going to save it to the desktop, or actually, maybe I'll save it right to my thumb drive and create a new folder. Just leave it as an untitled folder for now. So, this is named Slide In Video Boris Animated Preset.bap, and that's a fine name for that animation. So, I've saved that file. And I've also already saved the animation for the lens flare and the light rays and stuff like that. So we'll see that when we get over to the Avid system to try and load that animation there. So you see here basically it slides in. You also notice that there's a lot of keyframes where I'm using the tumble and spin of the layer to sort of make it seem like it's jiggling around to the drum beat, to the music a little bit. So, so we will take a look at the Avid system on how to import the options for importing the animated preset on that side. Okay, so here I am in Media Composer now, and you see I have an Avid title there on the top track. And the next track down, I have that same background video we're looking at After Effects and the audio tracks. Um, see, as I play it down, there's no effects applied yet. But let's say I was in a situation where I needed to create that animation in Avid. Um, I can do it by just applying the BCC DVE Basic effect here. And in Effect Mode, I go into the Preset menu and choose Load. And I'm going to navigate to my thumb drive where we saved that animated preset. Choose Open. See the import options here, preserve timing. You can um, have it preserve the original timing of the keyframes as they were saved in, in, in the filter. Stretch to fit will scale the timing of the keyframes to fit another duration if the duration is different from when it was saved. And in this case, we'll choose preserve timing because we want it to be the same. And if I... Oops, let me make sure I select that effect. If I go here and I choose the position XY curve, you see that that's um, you know, similar to the curve that we were seeing earlier in After Effects. Let me just close that out. 
and you get your nice um, motion blur and the same animation. You see all these little keyframes are actually um, the uh, the tumble and spin if I look at them have all these keyframes because that's how this uh, the little jitter that the plane does to seem to sort of kind of be moving along with the music, jiggling along with the music uses a lot of keyframes. So that motion is there now and let's say I want to apply now the, to the title I can uh, go into effect mode there. Actually first what I'm going to do is just replace the title effect with BCC DVE basic and in effect mode I need to set it to apply to title matte. So it's keyed over the video there and again load preset in the thumb drive I have slide in title which was a slightly different uh, slightly different take without the jiggling on the title animation you can see there so the title comes in and you know and you could just you could add the um, the light rays and the lens flare and stuff like that same way you can just bring all the over, animation over and and just re-render it um, in Avid and in this case the render would take a few minutes because it's got the motion blur going on and stuff like that so I'm just going to toggle over to a rendered version of the sequence and monitor from the top layer there and I'm not sure how good a frame rate my screen capture is going to give you here but if I play it back try that one more time Let's see if basically you see that um, we're able to bring that effect over pretty sophisticated animation really quickly into into Avid um, you know the question of why would you want to do that um, certainly you know exporting a movie out of After Effects and bringing that into Avid a rendered movie is common and a useful workflow but you know maybe you want to make some last second change you know here I have my lens flare I made it more bluish than orange to sort of match the background image better Maybe you had to change some of the text in the title or a slightly different shot in the background. All kinds of last minute changes you might need to make and not want to have to go back um, to the After Effects project. Um, another thing, you know, if you have some crafty animators working in After Effects, they can use Boris Continuum and sort of feed you animated presets to use in the editor. Um, you know, for doing doing some more sophisticated animations. If you're more of an editor type and and effects isn't necessarily your specialty or at least animation then uh, you know you can get some presets from the After Effects users as well so um, you know Continuum besides being cross-platform it's cross-host compatible these Continuum presets so and now with version 6 it includes keyframes uh, as well as just static uh, presets